Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright. These are the opening lines of what may be the most beloved Christmas song ever. Forget Mariah Carey belting out, all I want for Christmas is you, or Bing Crosby sweetly crooning white Christmas. There is something about Silent Night that touches the heart like no other holiday song. Many churches end their Christmas Eve worship services with this song, like we will, holding lighted candles in our hands. For many, it's the highlight of the evening. And yet, as we sing this tranquil song tonight, the words, all is calm, all is bright, seem at odds with what's happening in the world around us. The war between Hamas and Israel continues, with far too many innocent lives being lost. The war between Ukraine and Russia continues, with no end in sight. There is also a brutal war happening in Sudan that rarely makes the news here in the United States. So all is not calm and bright in 2023. We know this all too well. Yet this feeling of dis-ease is not only happening in other nations across the globe. The same feeling of turmoil resides in our nation, which remains polarized and divided. And you may be personally feeling that all is not calm and bright in your life or in the lives of those you love. So what do we do with this emotional conflict? How do we sing this beloved song in 2023 in a way that rings honest and true in our hearts and spirits? Well, the first thing we need to know is that all was not calm and bright when Jesus was born. Luke throws around a few names as he begins his story of the birth of Jesus. Caesar Augustus is the leader of the Roman Empire. He was the great nephew of Julius Caesar. Rome was the occupying power in Israel at the time, and the people who lived there resented it. Furthermore, many of the Jewish leaders were looked at suspiciously because they were collaborators with Rome. And so the people were longing for a day when the Messiah would come as a military leader and throw out the Romans. The second name on, Augustus, on Luke's list is Augustus. Augustus issued a census of the Roman Empire, which of course is another means of controlling and subjugating the people. Rome didn't want anyone skipping out on paying taxes to the empire, and this census would ensure that didn't happen. Quirinius was a Roman official and governor of the neighboring country of Syria, but little is known about him. The Jewish leader of the time was King Herod the Great, and he was known to be both paranoid and cruel. So all was not calm and bright when Jesus was born. To make matters worse, Joseph took his very pregnant wife Mary on the long trek from Nazareth to Bethlehem, which was Joseph's hometown. And I have no doubt this journey was anything but calm and bright. And you know the rest of the story. There's a frantic search for an inn where Joseph and Mary could lodge. Who knows why their extended relatives, who lived in Bethlehem, could not offer the couple hospitality. Luke is silent on this subject. So the couple settled for a stable, which was most likely a cave, and they placed Jesus in a manger, a stone feeding trough for animals. So all was not calm and all was not bright when Jesus was born. Yet the Prince of Peace would not let his light be dimmed. Shepherds arrived and sang sweet songs of praise to Joseph, Mary, and the Christ child. Angels added a touch of wonder to this pivotal moment in history. And somehow in this humble location, a tiny space of peace and calm were created. A refuge for weary shepherds was offered. The stable was all aglow with the light of the Christ child, who would one day change the world. So all was calm and all was bright, at least in this small confined space in a tiny town called Bethlehem. And if you know the story of how the song Silent Night was created, you know that all was not calm and bright at St. Nicholas Church in Obendorf, Austria. Legend has it that in 1817, Joseph Moore, St. Nicholas' assistant priest, was dealing with a pastor's worst nightmare. Moore was making last-minute preparations for a special Christmas Eve Mass. 
but as he cleaned and readied the sanctuary, he discovered that the organ wouldn't play. A frantic Moor struggled with the old instrument for hours to see if he could find the problem, but in spite of his efforts, the organ remained silent, its voice as still as a dark winter's night. Realizing he could do nothing else, the priest paused and prayed for inspiration. He asked God to show him a way to bring music to his congregation on the year's most meaningful day of worship. He then remembered a poem he had written the previous year while serving in another church, and he fished it out of his desk, read over the words, and handed it to Franz Gruber, the church's musician at the time, and he explained the situation. He asked Gruber to write music to these words that could be easily learned by the choir, and it would have to be played on guitar. So Gruber took the words to the poem Stille Nacht and paired it with the melody and harmonies that we still sing to this very day. The two of them together created a space of calm and bright in the midst of a chaotic situation, and it has become a song of peace and light ever since. And this is where you come in. Like Jesus, the world which surrounds us is far from calm and bright. Like Joseph Moore, stressful situations will appear out of nowhere, challenging everything we've got to figure out how to deal with them. But in the midst of the deep darkness that sometimes happens in life, the Christ child invites us to be peacemakers and light shiners. All may not be calm and bright in the world around us, but all can be calm and bright in this holy place that we have created together, at least for one night. And that is something to hold on to. That is something we can sing about with hope and joy in our hearts. The biggest challenge we face as followers of Jesus is not allowing the darkness of our world to get the best of us. We are called to create space Spaces of peace and calm wherever and wherever we can. We are called to shine our light wherever and whenever we can. The world needs what we have to offer, and we may only be able to change the world one relationship at a time, but change it we must. When describing the arrival of Jesus, the Gospel of John says that the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. And this is what we are called to do as well, as followers of the Christ child. We are called to shine our light and not let the darkness overcome us. We are called to sing all is calm, all is bright, as if we actually believe that those words are true. You are the light of the world, Jesus said when he became an adult. A city on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so they may see your good works and give glory to God in heaven. So my dear friends, as we end our worship this evening, lighting our individual candles and singing Silent Night, may the words we sing be a commitment to creating spaces of calm and bright peace and light in our lives and in the world around us. May we leave this place with hope in our hearts and the firm belief that the darkness will not overcome us. Amen.